सदगुरु महाराज की जय गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षा परम ब्रह्मा तस्म श्री गुरुवे नम सदगुरु महाराज की group of voices together to be chant mahamantra all the names of god hari covers every form of god or goddess the names of ram and krishna in the name of hari a ved mantra that is recommended to take us across this whole saga this kaliyuga existence that can be achieved through maha mantra prayerfully let us look or focus our minds on that the chant maha mantra hare
to look less outwardly, the small eyes, the big ears, to hear more that which is positive and beneficial for you. Bhagwan is called Lambodar. Full of sweetness, Laddu. He's Biganeshwar, the remover of obstacles. He's Shambhu Kumar, the son of Bhagwan Shankar. Jo sumirat siddhi ho Gadnayak karivar vadan Karahu anu graha so Budhira Yeah. 
usually after prayers to Ganesh Bhagavan, we do Mahalakshmi Stotram. So, um, we try to have the lyrics and, on the screen for you so that the whole purpose of that is to um, encourage you to chant. Um, there is Shravan, there is Kirtan Bhakti, two forms of bhakti, listening and chanting. So make maximum benefit of our prayers. Lakshmi Karoti Kalyanam Arogyam Sukhasam Paha Mama Shatrum Vina Chakra Gada Haste Mahalakshmi Namo Sute Namaste Garuraru De Kola Sura Bhayankari Garbo Papu Hade Devi Mahalakshmi Namo Sute Sarvadye Sarvarade Sarvadukhe Bhayankari Sarvadukhe Hade Devi Mahalakshmi our prayers to Mahalakshmi then we give little prayers to Bhagavan Shankar um, so again we'll try to get you the lyrics um, we'll do Brahma Murari Sura Chita Lingam just one verse or so as we focus our mind on the Lingam of Bhagavan we do Puja on the Puja on the Lingam while chanting. Karpur Gauram Karuna Avataram Sansar Saram Bhujage Sada Vasantam Hidaya Ravinde Bhavam Bhavani Sa 
of the Durga path or Devi Saptashati, um, Dei Saubhagyam. We ask of the Divine Blessings, the Saubhagyam of Divine Mother. Saubhagyam will give us Arogyam. Arogyam means of, of, of freedom from ailments and sicknesses of every kind. Dehi me Padamam Sukham. If we have Devi Saubhagya, then we have Param Sukh. Um, happiness in every possible way. Especially this morning again we pray for Brother Surendra uh, Jagde who's still in the hospital um, and for everyone else who is ailing right now we ask Divine Mother Arogyam to bless them with both mental and physical strength to tide over these difficult times. Group your voices together and we pray to Divine Mother. Dehi saubhagya marogyam Dehi me paramam sukham Rupam dehi jayam dehi Yasho Have a 
speaker coming on we go into our meditation but before um, we'll prostrate to the divine feet of Bhaganji once more um, we'll join in the small dhun before we proceed Brajjan Pritam Bal Mukundam Radha Ramanam Hare 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 is Hari Hari like we said Radha Raman is Radha Krishna referring to Sri Krishna the Brajjan Pritam in Vraj the people the Vrajjan the people in Vraj and Vraj doesn't necessarily only mean Vrindavan but Vraj is the entire area uh, Gokul Vrindavan Mathura Janbhumi Bhagavan Govardhan etc. All these areas Nandagao all constitute the Braj area. So Braj Jan Priyatam the Priyatam the one who is most loved in Braj at that time and now loved by everyone is Bala Mukunda little Sri Krishna the one who is Kesar Tilakam who was the Tilak with, uh, with Kesar you know Kesar saffron um, Krishna Varanam that is the color of the Tilak he has on his forehead Radha Ramanam Hare Hare please let us join Google voices together I think we should be able to have the lyrics there for you so we group our voices together as we chant to Bhagavan Brajjan Priyatam Balamukundam Radha Ramanam Hare Hare Radha Ramanam Hare Hare Brajjan Priyatam Balamukundam Radha Ramanam Hare Hare Radha Ramanam Hare Hare Brajjan Priyatam Balamukundam Radha Ramanam Hare Hare Radha Kesaratilakam Krishna Varanam Kesaratilakam Krishna Varanam Radha Ramanam Hare Hare Radha Ramanam Hare Hare Brajjan Priyatam Balamukundam Radha Ramanam Hare Hare Radha Ramanam Hare Hare Rajat ban malam, rupar salam. Rajat ban malam, rupar salam. Radha ramanam, hare hare. Rajat, rajat ban malam, rupar salam. Radha ramanam. Hare Hare Radha Ramanam Hare Hare Radha Ramanam Hare Hare Bin Kritnadam An 
आनंद पारम राधा रमन हरे हरे राधा रमन हरे हरे जन ब्रज प्रियतम बार मुकुंदम राधा रमन हरे हरे राधा रमन राधा रमन हरे हरे राधा रमन हरे हरे वृंदावन बिहारी लाल की जय कंधयलाल की जय राशेश्वरी राधा रानी की this morning before we we do our meditation we will um, look at a few verses from scriptures uh, last week we celebrated Mother's Day um, and we heard from so many different pundits and um, all of us we mentioned the greatness of a mother and the role she plays and how how um, how selfless selfless the mother operates and so mothers do their best based on what the need is at the time but mothers are also human beings as we heard last week who love unconditionally there's also another role for moms and I know last week was Mother's Day but we did not do a related pravachan because we tried to give time um, <clears throat> to you know, Lakshmi Mandir, their beautiful show they had um, for Mother's Day. And so I hope you all enjoy that. But um, so today we'll do a slightly um, a Mother's Day pravachan with a little twist, might I add, to see what are the other roles of moms and their interaction with their children. Um, like I always say, I may not have said it every time on this program, but whenever we do a small provision from the scriptures, it is not meant to tell anyone what to do. It is meant for information. Now, you might say, someone may say, well, if it's, if it's good, if it's from the scriptures, then it should not only be information. So I agree. If anyone listening thinks that it is good for them, then they can certainly implement that, um, those points or values into their lives and they'll be able to benefit from them. And if they're, if they're not, then, you know, just, just don't leave them with me, perhaps, um, so, this morning, we will also give some information um, from the scriptures, mainly from, from Ramayan, um, to see what is the extended role of mom, outside of all the great things we heard um, and that we all know as children. 
um, there's still more that are expected of moms. We'll see what uh, Ayodhya Khand of Ramayana says. पिता गुरु स्वामी सिख सिर सिर धरी this part very well we want to use this doha to establish um, one point in our pravachan mata pita guru swami sikha siridhari karai subhai that you know the children um, who follow the advice of mother and father Guru, the religious preceptor, the master, religious masters, and they would they would gain in life, and they would have done that which is proper, both ethically and from a dharmic standpoint. Um, this is what is expected of of children. That also mean inherent in the fact that the children should be um, adherent to parents, the fact that we are all um, human beings, if children are to be adherent, then it also means that parents have to be right. And right every time. Because if the, if the parents are not right every time, or the mom is not right, then there's an argument there that the child should not follow that which is incorrect for him or her whether it's in their social lives or their spiritual lives. On the other hand, a child cannot just cry foul whenever the child is uncomfortable with something, you know, maybe imposed or advised by mom and dad that, you know, I don't want to do this, only because it's inconvenient. Um... It's not something they're willing to implement in their lives. And so you have a, a confrontation, you have a disagreement. The best thing to do at that point in time, you know, have a meeting with the parents and children and come to a conclusion. Um, bring your values, your family values. And I'm sure family values would be your spiritual values, your scriptural, your religious values, your ethical values. Bring your values to the table. Sit and talk about it. And do that which is in the best interest of the family or your value system. Right? Um, so, because of those values, Bhagwan Sri Ram was also explaining uh, something to, to Lakshman. In this same katha. राज प्रिय जग खारी जासुराज प्रिय प्रजु खारी सोन पव सभी नर सभी खारी Chha 
चरण रथ हो कृपा सिंधु परिहरे जासुराज प्रिय प्रजा दुखारी सो नृप अवसी नरक अधिकारी सो ग्रोइंग अप विद विद राइट वैल्यूज इज इज इंपॉर्टेंट व्हाई बिकॉज एट सम पॉइंट इन टाइम इन लाइफ द चिल्ड्रन वुड हैव टू एक्सरसाइज दोस वैल्यूज दैट वर इंस्टिल्ड इन देम ग्रोइंग अप एंड सो हियर इज अ सिचुएशन वेयर um Bhagwan Sri Ram is telling Lakshman why because they are going away to the forest and so Lakshman wanted to come with Bhagwan Sri Ram and so Bhagwan Ram is trying to dissuade Lakshman that look you cannot come because you need to stay here and help Bharat with running the 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 kingdom why because a king who brings sufferings to his beloved people surely so nipu avasi narak adhikari those kings those leaders deserve a place in hell narak so bhagwan is giving lakshman dharm niti right the rules of the of dharm how to operate a dharmic state lakshman is listening because bhagwan sri ram is trying to exercise some level of leadership because of the fact that he's going away to the forest but when you think about the word leadership you know the first the things that come to mind are you know power and and perks and and title and all these things come with leadership but leadership is really a commitment we may have heard the term from the book leaders eat last and immediately we can think of who's the person we know routinely eats last and it's a mother she ensure everyone eats first and then she eats last you know if you're from the business side then um you know in business they tell you take care of yourself first a mom takes care of herself last because in a mom's case it's a spiritual responsibility and a spiritual responsibility comes you know with a not just a commitment but a divine commitment why because since we're talking about leadership the mom is also a leader look at all the greatest qualities of a leader in any organization corporation or any entity and you'll see that a mom exercises all those qualities and even more to the point where she will sacrifice her own life and leaders are also expected to do that if need be we can remember um i was you know looking up an article a few days ago bumped into this uh picture it's online um and it came from the the new york times i think new york times newspaper covering the story of the the shooting in nairobi in kenya i think it was 2013 um and we should be able to show the picture it's a real picture a, 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 a reporter happened to have been in the building um when the shooting was happening and saw a mother covering her child with her own body that is when we talk about leadership that is how a mom leads even at the expense of her own life but when we look at it you know a mother can lead in so many different ways but one of the ways that a mother can lead because whatever the mother does that's what the child will do right um so i remember this very beautiful story that has been put together so um so descriptively by the great saint kripalu ji maharaj he says that a mother can lead in a different way as well for example when a child is little especially in the impressionable ages um years of the child um let's take for example the 
mother wants uh, you know a little rest she's tired or she has other preferences um domestic ones etc so she tells the child that look the neighbor is expected to come over today when the neighbor comes tell the neighbor that mom's not at home right this is, this is an example of another way that a mom can can impress upon the mind of a child and so the neighbor comes over the child remembers exactly um, what mom said so the neighbor approaches the child and the child says the child says uh, you know jab 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 parosi aata hai to usse bataye ki mummy kahti hai wo ghar par nahi hai um what a child is saying is saying to the neighbor that uh, where is your mommy oh mommy said when you come to tell you that mommy is not at home so what did the mom do um because mothers are such good leaders the mom comes out and asks the child what did you do that's not what i told you to say the child did not understand the child is very young you know 4 or 5 years old i told you to tell the neighbor i'm not at home not to tell the neighbor i say that i'm not at home essentially the child has put together now that the mom has told him to to tell a lie right so if there is any mother that does that then you don't have to teach that child that again the, that has now created an impression upon the mind of the child and the child will use it whenever he or she has to in life at his or her will now this sounds like a harsh thing but that is one of the things a parent a parent can do why because you know mothers are are known as the first guru so whatever the first guru teaches you especially in those impressionable years then it will it will stay with you forever but moms go way beyond that mothers don't teach children that but if anyone by mistake thinking it's just a one time thing no the child will learn it and so if we look at the sacrifices moms make for example you know in the military um if you ask a soldier you know a soldier we hear these stories all the time a soldier would put his body in front of a of a of a bomb to save the other soldiers right every time there's so many stories he'll put his life in danger to save another's and if you were to ask him if you were to ask any soldier why why did you do that the answer is the same across the board with any soldier the answer is because they would have done that for me that's the answer it's always the answer because that's what soldiers do so because of that also in the military they give medals to people who are willing to sacrifice their lives so that others may gain it's in the military in business interestingly you know they give bonuses to people who are willing to sacrifice others so that they can gain or the boss can gain it's a little harsh but it's practical it happens out there we operate in this zero sum environment i'm not try to implement the win win environment zero sum is one person loses one wins win win is that everybody wins and so the question comes that a mom will will not do that So why is mom she is not putting her life ahead um to save the lives of the children because she's thinking oh I would want them to do the same thing for me that's not in her mind she just does that naturally because the mom has the child's best interest at heart because moms have unconditional love for children However having said that if you want to be objective then there's a flaw there's a problem in that very love that a mom rules by 
Because remember, mom is the first guru, right? So what is mom's job? Gu means maya. And ru means liberation. Maya as in darkness. And ru, liberation, as in light. But bear in mind here that mom has a, uh, you know, she has to deliver on this divine commitment. So there's no selfishness in her mind. By the way, uh, the second half of the Chao Pai, uh, we were supposed to explain is that, you know, Manakrama Bachana Charana Ratahoi Kripa Sindhu Parihiyaki Soi. That the Chao Pai is saying, Lakshman, you know, is saying now to Bhagavan Sri Ram, and Sri Ram asks him to stay. Lakshman says, Look, hey Ram, you know, a person who is so devoted to your feet in man, kram, bachan, in, in thoughts, in words, and in action, should that person also be abandoned? Should you leave that person aside? Because, you know, that is, in my mind, that's not fair. And so, Bhagavan Sri Ram is listening. So he mentions to Lakshman. He cannot answer. He knows Bhagavan Sri Ram knows better than anybody else how devoted Lakshman is to his divine feet. And so he says to Lakshman, he says, Look, Lakshman, here's what you have to do. Manga Hubida Matu Sanjai Avahu Begi Chalahu Ban Bhai He says, Lakshman, Manga Hubida Matu Sanjai That go and ask mother. Go and ask mom what you should do. If you're allowed, if mom says you can come with me, then come. And let's go to the forest. So Lakshman went. Lakshman described to his mother, who is Sumitra, not Kaushilya or Kaikahi. There is Ram, Bharat, Lakshman and Shatrugna, right? Bharat, Kaikahi is Bharat's mother. Kaushilya, Bhagavan, Sri Ram. Then there is Lakshman and Shatrugna, Sumitra. So Lakshman asks, and in the mind of Sumitra, Gai sahami sunu bachana kathora Mrigide ki davajanu chahora When Sumitra heard this, what Lakshman had to say, that he has, been pre- he, has, he has prepared himself and he wants to, and he's here to seek her blessing, to go to the forest with Bhagavan Sri Ram for 14 years, then what happened? Sumitra was stunned. She was stunned according to Ramayana Murigi Dekhi. Now when a deer is in the forest and the deer realizes that you know she's alone and there is fire that has started in the forest and she can see fire on different sides. She becomes confused. She can't think straight. It's probably one of the reasons why you know, especially here in Florida, you drive on the road and, you know, deer would jump into the windscreen of cars. Why? Because with the approaching headlight, they, they stop thinking. They cannot think what to do. So they plunge straight into the, the, the approaching light. So this is a scenario that Sumitra is explaining, that she was so confused and so stunned that she became like a, like a deer um, around fire. And so Sumitra being a mom, realizing and recognizing her divine commitment. Not only a mother's duty, but a divine commitment, and we'll talk about this uh, before we finish explaining this Chao Pai. Her divine commitment, she's remembering, and she's thinking, how should I respond to, to what Lakshman is saying? So this is how she responded. Sumitra is addressing... Uh, Lakshman
pauses for a little bit and then she speaks she says to Lakshman you know very quickly she processed the entire situation in her head this is her son going away with his stepbrother to the forest for 14 years he has a whole kingdom to enjoy he has his mother there but yet he has chosen to go with Ram and so Sumitra had to dissect the situation in small pieces to ensure that she comes up with the right answer this is this is not a political situation it's not a social situation sumitra has seen this as a divine situation so what did she say she pauses and she says to sri ram the ram look tahi divasu jahabhanu prakashu that that place can only be called day, divas. When Bhanu Prakashu, when the sunlight is out. Not because it's bright, or when the sunlight is out. Sunlight is so beneficial. So when the sunlight is out, that's daytime. In a similar manner, my son, Avadataha Jaharam Nivasu. Only that place is Avadha. Avadapuri, meaning Ayodhya. Only that place is Ayodhya where Ram Nivasu. Nivasu, was the root verb here means to live. Nivasu means an abode. An abode means where Bhagwan dwells. So Ram Nivasu, Sumitra, is now telling her son, Lakshman, that only that place is, is Ayodhya where Ram dwells. She's not thinking about herself. She's not thinking about the kingdom or anything. She says, if you want to be in Ayodhya, then you need to be where Bhagwan Ram is. So, bearing this in mind, you know, go and accompany your brother and don't ever think about the duties you have to the kingdom or the duties you have to your mother. Because Sumitra, after thinking about it carefully, she seizes the opportunity, she seizes the moment to uncover, to uncover the selfless and most rare privilege of the accompaniment of Bhagwan Sri Ram in the midst of all the rubble. She can see a silver lining. In the midst of chaos and confusion, already created by Bhagwan Sri Ram going away. And so Sumitra says to her, to her son, the Jao better, you can go. Go with, your, go with your brother. Her exact words, Lehatat Jagajivan Lahu. Lehatat. Tat, she's addressing her son in a, in a loving manner. Jagajivan Lahu. That go and benefit. There is only one way to benefit of your existence in this world. And that is to be in the company of Bhagavan. The company of God. These are the words of Sumitra. 
that maximize on the rarest of opportunities in this world. Why is Sumitra saying that? Because she's looking out now from a deeper place. Not from emotions, but from a deeper place about the benefit of her son. She's doing this for a reason, and we'll address it in just a few minutes before we close. There's a beautiful verse in Bhagavad Gita that says, Yadaya charati shreshas tadevataro jana Sayat pramanam purute lokas tadunavartate This is the verse 21 of uh, chapter 3 of the Bhagavad Gita that says that whatever actions great persons perform, common people will follow. Whatever standards they set, all the world would pursue. Think about it in the life of a child. There's nobody greater. There's no greater role model than a mother or than the parents. So whatever they do, the children will of course do. Bhagavad Gita is saying this. But Sumitra is also thinking about Hanumanji, about the selfless service that Hanumanji performed. Hanuman performed seva for Bhagwan uh, Sri Ram. She knows of Ramayan Katha, even though this part of the Ramayan didn't happen yet. But Ramayan happened so many times before. If you read Ramayan, Balmiki ji wrote Ramayan before it actually happened. Jamond was there for many lives of Bhagwan Sri Ram, and so. She thinks of Hanumanji always serving selflessly. She thinks of seva. Seva meaning selfless service. You know, if you want to do bhakti, if you want to be devoted, and, and Sumitra knows if you want to be devoted to God, if you want to have serving lovingly, then you have to do, you know, bhajadhatu sevayam. This is the root for when you look at the word bhakti. If you want to do bhakti, bhajadhatu sevayam. You have to do seva. Selfless service completes bhakti. It is not just chanting and hearing God's name. A person has to always do manav seva and madhava seva. One of it will not work. Manav seva means service to man. Madhava seva, service to God. You know, for those of you who are listening who, who knew my father, you know, this is something he said almost every time he speaks. You cannot serve God if you cannot serve humanity. It comes from the scriptures. You know, Sumitraji realized that, you know, Manushwattam Mukshuttam Mahapurusha Sambhava. It is the rarest of opportunities when a person has a yearning, Mukshuttam, to know God. So, realizing that, Sumitraji took the back seat. And um, she and she ensured that Lakshman is going on that topic. You know, Hinduism has taught us, our scriptures taught us for a very long time about, you know, it's not what you tell the child. It's what you show the child. The actions of the parents is what the child w w will do. This will form an impression in his mind. There's, you know, recent uh, there are scientific studies to support what the scripture uh, has been saying for a long time. I think Michigan University has done a, a study in 2013. I don't remember the dates, but it's in 2013 to show that uh, whatever the Hindu scriptures are saying, that what the, what the parents do, the child would observe and the child will do the same thing. So the scriptures and science, they both tell us conclusively that don't do one thing. Mom is not allowed, unfortunately, to do one thing and, 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 and expects the child to do something else. And so mom, Sumitra, has realized, realizes this purpose that this is an opportunity for me to go beyond this world beyond my earthly relationship with this human being who's my son and and help him to do that which is best what is best in sumitra's mind you know in our relationship we have something called a, a rishta for those of you who know a little bit of hindi you know rishta is is a human relation you know, we heard this word rishte dar or rishta from our songs and what have you. So that's a blood relationship. Rishte dar means a blood relative. 
What Sumitra is telling Lakshman is to go and establish or continue or capitalize on something that is called Sambandhi. Sambandhi means uh, a different type of relationship. You know, we may have heard, of, you know, because we have blood relation, blood relatives, and then we have relations that we have created. Like, for example, you know, your child is married into the house of a, you know, the some um, others, of course. And so the parents in one home of one child would address the male parent of the other child as a samdhi, right? We know that word. And the female would be samdhi, and the, the the rather the female would be samdhan, and the male would be um, samdhi. Right now, this is not a blood relationship. We have created this relationship. The sambandhi that that Sumitra is saying about is when when we look at it, you know, the there's a prefix, and then there's a suffix, and then there's a word in between. There's samdhi, and then there's sambandhi. So the dhatu, the word, the root verb there in that word is called dhatu. Dhatu means root verb, of course. And so this band, sam dhi, sam bandhi, the band means nitya bandhan. What is nitya bandhan? Eternal binding, an eternal relationship. Sumitra has thought of what is the eternal relationship that should be prioritized in the life of any human being, not only my son. And she came to the conclusion that the purpose of the human birth was to establish contact with God and attain God's abode. This, she realizes, is the best opportunity for her son. And so she took herself, like every mother, she took herself out of the equation. She thought of the of infinity, of our son, the soul, existing into infinity, and what will be the best scenario for him. And so um, Sumitra has decided that she will send her son with Bhagwan Sri Ram. Why? Because she knew Bhagwan Sri Ram is Bhagavan. And to do seva and to be in his company would secure, you know, any mother. You know, as I was growing up, um, when you go and take the blessings of your parents in the morning or whenever, they say something, you know, most parents, my mom used to say that, they say, Jug Jug Jiye Beta, right? Jug Jug means Janma Janma. Lifetime after lifetime, may you be blessed. The mothers know they don't necessarily have the capacity to do that because you're a mother in this life. But they love the child so much that they want to ensure that even though this will not be my child, I don't know what the relationship will be in the future, but I want this individual, this soul, to be happy. And so they tell you, if they don't say it in words, in their mind, that's what they want. And so there could not have been a better opportunity for the soul, for Lakshman, to go in the company of Bhagwan, Sumitra, the mother, with her motherly instincts, with her knowledge in scriptures and spirituality, she uh, she was able to make the right uh, choice. So, um, what we can conclude here is that mother's foremost duty. That's why I said, you know, we'll give a Mother's Day little pravachan with a little twist. The twist is, we know what the duties are of a son or of a daughter. What is the duty? What are the duties of parents? Or what is the highest duty of a mother? And we have learned from Ramayana today that the highest duty of a mother is to ensure the child becomes spiritually inclined. A child who is not hostile to God is the mother's foremost duty when it comes to what is expected of her, what she should provide in the life of her children. So that, that brings us to the end of our little pravachan today. But if you are listening, then I'm sure by now you have a question. right? Um, and your question is, 
how is that the most important duty of a mother? Because you can think of so many things. Mothers that are listening to us right now, uh, you go like, my child should surrender to God. How is that the highest duty? And so we'll answer this question, but um, I also, before we close, want to welcome, you know, all our, you know, my Pandit brothers on line with us today, Pandit Nishal Mizir is again with us this morning from Guyana, um, Dr. Bram Hardwar. Um, like we said, you know, Dr. G is a Hindu scholar as well. Um, while he's practicing in medicine, we're honored to have you, Dr. G. Um, I think uh, a fatherly figure pundit, um, Chandraban Hardwar is also, he's also a veteran pundit. And my mom moved from California, um, Pandit Hari Prasad is also with us. So I'm honored to have all you very learned souls with us so that we can join together in prayers. So before we go into our meditation, let us, um, let us answer this question. And I'll be as brief as possible. If you have further questions, then you can write to us, call us, you know, to get us. Um, so the highest duty of a mother is to ensure that her child is not hostile to God, or, or her child is a child who's spiritually inclined. How is that her highest duty? How about who takes care of the child when the child is young? What about sending the child to school, helping him or out every morning, you know, give them, giving them some money to go to school? If you can afford, you pay their tuition to go to college, you know, you... All, there are so many things that come to mind that how is it attaching the, the child's mind to God or helping the child in that process of attaching his or her mind to God is the highest duty. What happens to all the aforementioned things? Here's the answer. Ayu karma cha vittam cha vidyandhanamevacha panchaitani siddhyante garvastasya badehina This is Hitopadesh. There are five things in life that are unchangeable. You cannot change them, regardless of what you do. Many things in life can change. So this is our conclusion, so listen carefully. Many things in life can change. Bear in mind while I speak about five things that cannot be changed, bear in mind that human beings also come with something called free will. With free will, you can shape your destiny. While you're shaping your destiny with the free will that you've come into this world with, you've also come with a package from your Sanchit Karma that is now called your Prarabdha Karma. We cannot explain those terms now, but another time. Prarabdha Karma is the bundle that you've come with. And in that little bundle, which is Prarabdha, there are five things that are unchangeable. We'll explain them in brief. Ayu. Right? Ayu means a lifespan. Ayu karma cha vittam cha. Karma means what interest a child would have. Interest meaning um, would the child become a doctor, a teacher, an engineer, a, a blue collar worker? You want to. Whatever field of profession that child goes into is not something that will be determined by the mother. Mothers may think that, you know what, today my child's a doctor, all thanks to me. I've, I've, you know, I've planted in his mind since he was so young that he should become a medical doctor, he should become an engineer, he should become this, that, or the other. That's just a coincidence. Because whatever the karma of the child, the interest that the child would have, that is what the child would become. This is from the scripture, this is not my opinion. Are you karma chavit? Vit means wealth. How much wealth will come to that person easily? And some people, they just hit the lottery, playing for the first time, one ticket. Some people play their whole lives, never win anything. Some people have two, three jobs and trying to become rich and they never do. Some people work hard, they become rich. Some people work hard, can never make ends meet. So, a decent portion of this is caused by vit. 
by how much wealth you would amass easily. That doesn't mean you should become fatalistic. There's a thin line here. How much you'll get easily. Work hard and you'll be fine. Vidya, knowledge. How much knowledge comes to a child easily? How many of us have not been in class and this, this subject is so difficult? We're listening to the professor. We're doing our best. It's exam time and we're barely struggling to get a C. And sometimes we fail. The guy sitting next to you He's just relaxing and listening to the professor. He doesn't study, doesn't do anything, and he aces the exam. He gets a hundred. It's an A. Why? Vidya. How much knowledge will come easily is one of the five things that is unchangeable. Your brain is like a sponge. The other person, he gets through in life, he gets his degree or whatever he has to get, but he works so much harder. That is Vidya. And the fifth one, Nidhanamevacha. When and how, this might be a little bit insensitive, especially given the situation that we're experiencing right now. But Nidya Nidhanamevacha means when and how a person will die is one of the five unchangeable things in a person's karma. So what does it mean? It means that if your child will become a doctor, your duty as parent, or parents is to help the child through this process. It is your duty. You have brought this child into the world. You're not doing him a favor to you know, try to help him out. Mothers go beyond um, the call of duty, but you know, to provide a place for the child to live and some finances for the child to go to school, these things don't necessarily mean or add up to the child will become um, a portion of this particular field. Because if he's to become any of whatever he is to become, he will. Duty of mom and dad is to help him through the process. So I, I hope that little explanation works. If you need further explanation, then you know you can contact us. There, the, the scripture is a, you know, it's replete with examples. You know, purva jarma, purva janma, kritam karma, tardaivam miti katyate. That the actions performed in our last life with our free will, becomes bhagya, becomes destiny in this life. That is how those five things um, are unchangeable. All right, so I hope this little uh, pravachan helps to create a differentiation between um, what a mom's highest duty is and the things that, are, that a mom does on a daily basis. Um, a mom will do, you know, uh, that which no one else would ever do for the child. But bear in mind, all you young mothers out there, all you unmarried girls, um, doesn't mean you probably also have a question in your mind, okay, so where's dad's role? What does he do? Ah, the truth is I'll prefer not to explain that because then I'll fall into, a, you know, a guilty category. Um, so... But there is a duty for that as well. But the mom's duty, highest duty, is to ensure that the child becomes a devotee of God. The rest is just things that are expected and should be done of a mother, and a mother does it best. So, again, I, um, I hope that you remember these points, and the young mothers to ensure and remember what their highest duty is, and instill that kind of knowledge in the child unfailingly every day and it will be a win-win situation for mom and for the child what do i mean when the mom does right by the child there's divine benefits to be had to encouraging and enabling a child to become a devotee of god at this time my dear friends um we'll go into our meditation um so if you can prepare the mind, try to sit in a comfortable position.
put your hands on your thighs or any mudra you might like to um, choose to take on. Let's start with breathing deeply. Take a deep breath in. Try to go up to six or four. Hold it for two. Exhale. Breathe in again. One, two, three, four. Hold it. Hold it. Exhale. We'll do this one more time. Breathe in. Hold it. Exhale. All right, keep the eyes closed. Your breathing should be easier now and more comfortable. Keep the eyes closed and imagine Imagine that you're walking through a beautiful open field. As you go through, as you get closer to this field, the wind is so cool and calm and it's brushing past your face. You're feeling the coolness, the chill of the wind. And you realize that this is a flower field with most beautiful flowers. The scent of the flowers. The blue sky above you. The slightly warm sun rays. As you're sauntering through the flower beds on both sides of you, leisurely you're walking, you're having a stroll, and the aroma is breathtaking. But you can see the flowers, the yellow daffodils and the sunflowers, the white lilies, the pink orchids, multicolored tulips, and roses, and lavender. The flowers abound all around you in this most beautiful garden. Everywhere you look, there's a riot of colors. Blossom-filled beds of flowers, and you're stunned by the breathtaking beauty of the environment you're in. You've forgotten everything about the world, and you're enjoying and soaking in and consuming this beauty that you've never experienced before. The fragrance is overpowering. The fragrance is so strong that it conquers all other scents you have ever experienced. You love the tinkling of the wind chimes and the birds chirping, the burbling waterfalls and the plants gently rustling in the wind. The beautiful butterflies fluttering gracefully all around you. A multiplicity of colors. You've forgotten that you're a human being who lives here. You've never seen anything so beautiful. As you continue to walk, you notice ahead of you 
You're approaching a huge clump of trees. You're walking by the flower beds and you're approaching this huge tree. It's a banyan tree. And while you're approaching the banyan tree, you hear a symphonic voice. You decided to look under the tree. Is there someone there? When you look, you see in this very hypnotic movement the beauty of the walking of Bhagavan. And you've decided this is not any ordinary human being. You get closer. You're pleasantly surprised. That Kanhaya, Sri Radha Krishna, or your favorite form of God, is under the banyan tree, where it's so clean, comfortable chairs, thick cushions, the grass is soft, almost like a sponge. Under the banyan tree, You've reached there and Bhagavan is there. Sri Krishna reminds us in Bhagavad Gita Ashwattaha Sarvavrikyanam Devarishnam Chanarada First 26 of chapter 10 Kandhaya says that Amongst all trees I am the Ashwataha, I am the Banyan tree, the people tree, as we call it. You've reached under this people tree. You are standing in front of Bhagwan, and he walks up to you and he puts his arm around you. You've never experienced a feeling like that. There's no weight on your shoulder, but it feels like that cool breeze that was brushing your shoulders while you were walking in. When you look all around you, there are beautiful fruit trees around this huge banyan tree. Kanaya, your favorite form of God, has his arm around you and is pointing out to you the different trees, the different fruits. Kandaya loved trees. He used to be on top of the trees to make trouble with the gopis. Hanumanji jumped down from a tree to meet Mata Sita sent by Bhagavan Sri Ram. You remember the scene. All around this banyan tree, there are fruit trees. Some with fruit, some without fruit. You're gazing at the beauty. You're looking at the fruits. Bhagwan's hand is over your shoulder. These fruits have different colors. Bhagwan is explaining to you the significance of the different colors and the different tastes. The different tastes represent, my dear child, my dear friend, the Lord is saying, these different tastes represent the different temperatures, the different vicissitudes in life, the struggles, the happy moments, the successes, the failures, the union, the separation, the profits, the loss. God is saying to you, that all these different tastes represent the different tastes we experience in life. The different colors, my child, they, remember, they represent the three gunas. The dark colored ones represent darkness or evil. The really bright colored ones represent 
or a do-good, a mixture of good and of evil. The light colored ones, they represent subtle good, goodness, charity, selflessness, etc. Bhagavan is explaining to you the meaning of the different colors, the meaning of the different tastes. He is reminding you to choose the sweet fruits only, like a parrot. Bhagavat Mahapuran Nidamaka Patarogalitam Phalam Shukamukha Damrita Dravasanitam Vivat Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Muhuraho Rasika Bhavibhavaka Bhagavan says, like the parrot, Choose the galitam, the fully matured fruit. Choose the sweetest palam, the sweetest fruits. The shade, Bhagavan is saying, don't worry about the different vicissitudes in life. Don't worry about the different experiences you may have in life. Just think about one thing only. And this one thing is that if you keep under the banyan tree, if you stay under the tree, meaning Sri Krishna Sharanam Mama. Sharanam means a shelter. If you continue to take the shelter of this banyan tree, if you continue to take my shelter, then the reactions, the different seasons, and the attitudes, the developments that happen in the world constantly would not bother you. They will not bother your mindset. They will not affect you negatively because you'll be brimful of confidence that you're under the banyan tree, you're under the people tree, you're under the tree, the shade of Bhagwan, and he'll take care of everything. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity to be with you today. Bhagwan says, give me an embrace. And you embrace Bhagwan and you're feeling you're feeling this divine touch of ecstasy as this energy runs through your body from head to toe you're grateful and you're relishing in this embrace you don't want it to stop enjoy the embrace of Bhagwan while we close <laughs> So before we do our closing prayer today, um, I just want to thank all of you again for um, being a part of our satsang and I want to say very happy birthday to a very special little child in our family. Um, his name is Vittal, um, my little nephew from Canada. Um, I think he turns he turns three today. Um, I can imagine when he hears me um, calling his name, he'll blush. Um, everyone who meets his little child loves him. The only problem with me and him is that he doesn't like me. But um, Vittal is the son of Pandit Amit, Pandit Amit uh, Persad, um, the grandson of um, <coughs> of, uh, and so his mom. Vittal's mom is also um, my cousin, the daughter of my Chachi and Chach. And so I wish Vittal all the best. Um, 
loving child. So with a happy birthday and ensure you tell mommy and daddy to buy you all the gifts you want today. All right. Um, it's my mom's birthday from my mom from England. Um, my chacha's wife, I mentioned her last week in her happy birthday wishes. Um, so we call her mom. Um, I can't even remember her name because we've always been calling her mom. My dad's only brother. This is our chachi. Um, so mom, very happy birthday to you. And uh, may Bhagwan bless you so that you can continue um, to be around for a long, long time to do all those um, virtually impossible th things you do for my church. Um, I, I, I don't think you have any choice. You have to be around and healthy to ensure <laughs> my church is fine. Um, so, um, according, at least according to my church, right? I'm not necessarily saying that. Um, also, happy birthday to um, a young man who is an integral part of Lakshmi Mandir, who um, ensures that the wheels are turning in Lakshmi Mandir. His name is Randy. Um, Randy is the son of um, Anil Bhaya and Subhadra. Um, of course, they're from Guyana. Randy, very, very happy birthday to you. Um, I know you're very busy um, working and taking classes, but just from me and and Chiramla and the children, we're all very proud of you and the work you're doing. Um, you, Without you, Lakshmi Mandir, things would not be the same. Um, we're happy that you have taken on such responsibility. We're grateful to your parents as well. Please continue to do all the good work. Um, be confident in life when you're doing the right thing because the right things will happen to you as well. So thanks again, Randy, for being you and continue the great work to all of you who are celebrating your birthdays today. Um, I can't remember any more birthdays, to, but happy birthday to all of you. May Bhagwan bless you. Before we do closing prayers, let's join in uh, saying a prayer for everyone who celebrates their birthday. Oh. As you may have observed, today we tried a different um, sound system to eliminate the PA system. So not sure how it came across. If it, if you were able to hear clearly, um, you can give us some feedback based on how the sound was. We tried to make things more um, calmer in your ears. Um, with to, you know, to do this without the PA system. All of you stay safe until I see you again. May Bhagwan bless you. Take um, all precautions. Remember, this thing is not over by any stretch of the imagination. 
and um, we'll see you again next Sunday at 11 for another prayer service, another satsang. Bhagwan bless all of you. Vrindavan Bihari Lali Ki Jai.